Mr. Speaker, will you please call the House to order? The bill is passed. I'd like to get a budget that represents the interests of the people who are standing here with me now. To be part of the struggle to achieve a better society for who all. Who here in this chamber feels that their children should be punished for something that they did? Hi, and welcome to Assembly Update. I'm Assemblyman Phil Ramos, uh, and I represent the towns of Brentwood, Bayshore, Central Isop, and Bayshore. Uh, in the past five years, our country and our community has gone to an economic crisis uh, that has impacted communities such as mine uh, disproportionately. Uh, luckily, we have a safety net in our community of various organizations that uh, work uh, daily to try and help those who, who need that, uh, that help to get through these hard times. One of those organizations is the Lucille Winter Memorial Help Center. And today, I have two uh, distinguished guests with me. Uh, who run this organization. And I have uh, Donald Winter, who is the vice president of the organization, and Yolanda Caldiera, mm -hmm. director. I'd like to welcome you both. Thank you. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And it's, it's important that um, we talk a little bit about your organization. Um, it's, as I said, we have a safety net and we have various organizations uh, such as yours who help people. Uh, but creating awareness is something very important. If, if people don't know that that help is there, then they, they uh, don't avail themselves of it and, and uh, we fall short and, and it produces a lot of need and a lot of hardship. So why don't we start, um, Donald, with talking about a little bit about how this organization was formed. I understand that it's, uh, it's named, your, your mom is uh, Lucille Winter. Correct. Right, um, and that this organization is kind of a legacy to her. Correct, it is. Um, for many years, my mother felt that uh, um, it was a right for every human being to have a meal. Um, good times, bad times, it didn't matter. She had a godly sense that, uh, with that and uh, a hum human sense that people needed to eat. Mm -hmm. So she used to uh, travel around the east coast of the United States with my father and looking for a disaster or, or somebody in need, orphanages who needed food and clothing, and they used to pack up a car, later on a motorhome, and bring food and clothing up and down the east coast of the United States. She also volunteered at many different food banks in, in Long Island and mm -hmm. felt that we needed one in our community. Mm -hmm. The community was Deer Park, that's where, she was, that's where I was born and raised. Mm -hmm. Where's your organization located? We are at 975D Long Island Avenue in Deer Park. 975D D. Long Island Avenue. Correct. In Deer Park. Uh -huh. Is this the same place that she operated from? No, actually, it's, she, she originally worked from her home. Oh. Uh -huh. And uh, she brought it to the attention of our president, uh, Peter Nunziante, that she, um, now our president, mm -hmm. um, that we needed something in the area. So both Peter and my mother were discussing how we could get something going in the Deer Park, Bayshore, Brentwood area. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we started working in 2012 out of a home, mm -hmm. feeding people, bringing it to their houses, so on and so forth, clothes and so on. Um, when that started to get kicked off, to, you know, started up, my mom and dad went to deliver furniture in Georgia mm -hmm. to somebody, and my mother passed away in Georgia. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, but at that point, all her work that she put into it, um, people felt that it was a proper thing to do is to put the center mm -hmm. in her name mm -hmm. because of everything she tried to do for the community. It's a beautiful community. legacy. It's, a beautiful it, it's legacy an awesome legacy. Uh -huh. it, it was an honor to her, and I appreciate all of that. Mm -hmm. But she was very genuine that way. Yolanda, what are some of the services offered uh, from this organization? We offer clothing. We offer food, counseling, tutoring. But we just don't offer, we offer our time. Mm -hmm. When they come in to get their food, they don't, just don't come in and get their food and leave. We sit with them, we ask them how their week is going, we ask them if they need help with you know anything. And we are building a really close relationship with some of our clients. Mm -hmm. So, and normally people would come any time in the day. What, what are your operating hours? We're open on Tuesday evenings from 5 until 7.30, mm -hmm. Wednesday from 10 in the morning until 2, and on Saturdays 9 to 1. Mm -hmm. And they can walk in, they don't need an appointment. And um, they come in, we talk a little bit, they'll fill out some paperwork, and then they can help themselves. They go to the racks, they pick whatever clothing they need for themselves or their children, 
and while we're bagging their their food. Mm -hmm. And we help them take it to the car. You, you know, my office. We, in my office, we get a lot of constituents who come when they find themselves in, in a crisis, uh, and we end up referring people to mm -hmm. organizations such as yours. Um, and traditionally, in the first, uh, I, I would say, the first five years of my serving as assemblyman, I've, I've been at uh, twelve years. But in the first five years, traditionally, we had a lot of people who are homeless, a lot of people who fall, ha had fallen on hard times. Um, and that was the, the nature of the people who would come uh, come forward for help. Once we entered into the, the economic crisis, uh, my office started to receive yeah. middle class mm -hmm. people, uh, people who own a home, perhaps mm -hmm. a very nice home, uh, but just they, they, they were going under economically. They weren't able to uh, put food on the table for, uh, for the entire week. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank God for organizations like yours, uh, we, we were able to help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And you know, although the economy has gotten a little better, we're still seeing a certain mm -hmm. percentage of, of those middle class people who they got so behind the eight ball that they're just starting to come out of it. There's mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. people who are in that, that crisis situation. And, uh, and organizations such as yours provide uh, you know, important services. Now you find um, that in addition to just getting food, that you're having to assist people with other issues? Well, when it's time for school, we help with school supplies. In the middle of the year, when the children are running out of supplies, they can come by and pick up whatever they need for their children. But a lot of times, not only food and, and clothing, but sometimes they need someone just to talk to. Mm -hmm. You know, they're middle class. You know, if the husband is a construction worker and all of a sudden the weather is bad, he's out of work. Mm -hmm. So they come, they get treated with dignity, they're not beneath us, they're just a friend who just is, is in need at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, and they feel that. They feel that we're not judging them. We're there to help them. And some of the clients turn around and come back and say, you know what, you need some help. Let me, you know, help you sort the clothes or clean the shelves or hand out. So now we have clients mm -hmm. who are also helping. So it, it's a great place. It's, ama it's amazing how good faith has a multiplier effect mm -hmm. because your organization is not one that has uh, large funding streams coming no. from the government or anything no, like that. Not at all. Yet you've been able to survive uh, primarily because of that multiplier yes. effect of good faith. Mm -hmm. uh, people also can, realizing the importance of it, people you've helped who mm -hmm. give back mm -hmm. and they keep the organization alive. Yep. Um, and uh, this spark was ignited by your mom. Absolutely. You know, it, it's, it's really inspiring to see how this just keeps going in, in her memory, and it stays alive by the very people who, who've been helped by it. It's wonderful work that you do. Now, uh, do you have, uh, how large is your staff there, or is it, uh, th are these, um, is it volunteers who work there, or? We have 100% volunteers. 100%? 100%, nobody so, gets paid. So any donations to your organization, 100% of it goes to help people? Yes. It goes to help people it, and keep the organization running. That's uh -huh. what it does, for the phones, for the rents, the electric, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And to buy food if we need to, uh, buy supplies if we need to. Mm -hmm. Anything goes to the, it just goes to the organization. Nothing personal for anybody. Mm -hmm. It's all volunteer, and I commend those people for that. It's a lot of time. Yeah, it's truly amazing that, that people would give it's up a lot their of time. time. Uh, so uh, I guess they, they split it up into shifts. You have volunteers who come and they work different shifts. You said what are the um, throughout the week? What were the hours? Tuesdays from 5 to 7.30, mm -hmm. Wednesdays from 10 until 2, and Saturdays from 9 to 1. Uh -huh. So, uh, and then of course we have in between, whether we're getting deliveries, you know, stock in the shelves, mm -hmm. but um, everyone, you know, no one gets paid, mm -hmm. and we're a big family. Mm -hmm. Donald, if, uh, if somebody wanted to uh, contact your organization, how would they do that? Okay, there's two ways. They could go on our website mm -hmm. at uh, lwmhc.com or they could call the number 631-496-2062. All right, why don't we get that again for those who didn't have a pen in their hand. Website uh -huh. is lwmhc.com mm -hmm. or 631-496-2062. Very good. Now, Although you're, you have certain hours that you operate, um, one can contact your organization 24 mm -hmm. hours a day, mm -hmm. or seven days a week, right? You, they can leave a message and somebody would, would get back to them. Absolutely. And like I said before, um, on certain hours, you may be calling the center and it'll get, we'll get out the phone call on our cell phones so mm -hmm. we can speak to people because emergencies happen at all times of the day or night. Mm -hmm. So we try to make ourselves available to them 
And if not, they can leave a number. We'll call them right back. We mm -hmm. can set up an appointment with them. So you see clients by appointment as well? Yes. Right. So you can set yes. something. If they yes. have a special need, they yes. can call and, mm -hmm. and ask for somebody to sit down and speak with. Yep. Now, you serve a community that's very diverse. Uh, do you have uh, bilingual volunteers there? Who well, we do. We have, I speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few of us, but we desperately need more volunteers who do speak Spanish because mm -hmm. a large number of our clients uh, don't speak English. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, you have a growing um, a Haitian population as well. Yes. Uh, who speak Creole. I'm sure that would be very useful. Yes. Yes, but we don't have anyone who, who speaks that language. Mm -hmm. And do you find that, um, is that the predominant language of, of people who come in? We've gotten a couple of um, Chinese families mm -hmm. and that speak no English. Mm -hmm. So for the first time I was able to experience what it was like to communicate with someone who I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult, but we, we manage, we manage, mm -hmm. you know. But it would be nice because a lot of want to talk and we can't communicate, so it's mm -hmm. hard. And the literature from your organization, how do you distribute that? Uh, well, it, we have one in English and one in Spanish, and uh -huh. you know, uh, we carry some in our bags, they get handed out, mm -hmm. clients come in, take some with them, mm -hmm. and a lot of organizations will call us and they'll bring their clients in, so like uh, Suffolk County Fatherhood, you know, um, the senior citizens, WIC programs, all that, they have our literature. Mm -hmm. So they also send clients. So you prov provide also um, referral service, so if somebody, if, if um, if a woman came in and said, look, I, I can't work because I don't have child care and I can't afford it, um, you would be there to assist them to try and get them the services that they need? We would do our best to hook them up with an organization that could help them if we can't help them. Mm -hmm. um, we had a couple of people look for jobs. I made a few phone calls and we got one of them a job. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. And if not, we'll refer them to uh, an organization that might have a job opening. Mm -hmm. So we do our best, not only do we feed them, clothe them, and speak to them about their personal needs and family needs, we try to mm -hmm. find them. Uh, so a lot of problems that, that people are having is they, they just don't know where to turn to for help, Correct. Right? They just exactly. not familiar what's available, what services are available, and how, how to avail themselves of it. That's correct. We do work closely with um, a couple of shelters and battered women organizations. Mm -hmm. So they, when we're not sure, we can call them and tap into their resources. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, it's a big community and we help each other in every way we can. Mm -hmm. And um, geographically, what areas does your organization cover? We cover uh, Deer Park, some of Huntington, North Babylon, a large number in Brentwood, Bayshore, and Islip area. Mm -hmm. And um, they come in uh, different days, those different days. If they mm -hmm. miss a Tuesday, they know we're there on Wednesday. If mm -hmm. they miss a Wednesday, they'll come on a Saturday. Uh, I guess it's important you have Saturday hours. Yeah, that's a big, a, you know, big day. Uh, people, people many times think that those who need these type of services and help getting, putting food on the table, uh, for the most part, people who are unemployed and homeless. And that's not true. No. There, mm -hmm. are, there are many working poor in our community mm -hmm. who are working mm -hmm. eight hours a day, 40 days, uh, 40, 40 hours a week. Um, and it's real difficult. That's one of the reasons why we, uh, I'm, I'm wanting to find sponsors on uh, raising the minimum wage, and we're really pushing for that. But I want to thank you. You are truly uh, the angels in our community who, uh, who, who are there uh, working to make a difference in, in the quality of life and, and helping people in, in their time of need. Your safety net and your, your uh, you allow people to remain productive, contri contributing citizens by offering them uh, not a handout, but a hand up because uh, That's right. you're there to provide the services that they That's need. Right. So I thank you so much for all that you do nice for our community. Thank you for letting us come on. Thank you.